Is your lawn changing colors? <laughs> is it becoming a patchwork of shades and colors? <laughs> You've got annual weeds dying off. Yes, yes you do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> You don't have to put down a crabgrass killer. <laughs> Nature is taking care of it for you. Isn't that great? You know, do, are birds feeding on your lawn? Like all of a sudden, there are birds like everywhere. I, I, of birds I, I saw, well, I did. I yeah. saw a flock of birds not too long ago. I was driving past somebody's house and it was just full of birds. Um, and it was clear they didn't recede. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but what it was is that they were eating the crabgrass seeds, which they were being helpful. Um, that are dropping off of those dying plants. And any of those spots where you see it turning different colors, they're basically finished for the year. They're dropping their seed. And obviously a lot of people think, oh, when it gets cold, it happens. No, it's the sun, right? It's the sun and the amount of daylight that calls things into action. I I keep thinking about hummingbirds. It's like, should I keep feeding my hummingbirds? Should I keep feeding my hummingbirds? Aren't they going to freeze? Like, don't they freeze to the to the hummingbird Rural feeder and they, they're stuck? There? No, no, no. Hummingbirds are called by the sun to say, hey, time to leave. Time to leave. Same thing with monarch butterflies. When they go across to Mexico, they're called by the sun. So if you have them, keep feeding them. Um, but so the whole thing about crabgrass and other types of grassy weeds in your lawn, it starts now. Like now is when they, they're replacing the old plant. <laughs> so you, you get one, they're an annual grassy weed and that they're dropping their seeds. So, so what, do you, what does that mean? You better get pre-emergent on in the fall and that it'll prevent them from coming up. Not fall, excuse me, rewind. You need to put it down in the spring and that the pre-emergent control. So a lot of people, and it's, it's amazing how um, Scott's company has changed the vernacular. Oh, you mean step one. <laughs> step, <laughs> it's step one. <laughs> um, step one in the Scott's annual program is a crabgrass preventer with pendimethalin and fertilizer. Um, every company has their own uh version of that and and it used to only be a crabgrass preventer plus fertilizer now understand this is why it's such a great time to put down grass seed grass seed will germinate when the temperatures are you know the soil temperature are 50 degrees or higher now if you seed in the fall you can still get that to germinate and take care of and then you can put a pre-emergent crabgrass control and fertilizer in the spring and everything's good if you seed in the spring you have to use a specific type of crabgrass preventer that is distinguishes between regular grass plants and between uh crabgrass plants so and its effectiveness is it works kind of it works but it's not the best situation so if you're you need to seed you need to seed in the fall it's the best time now do i here you go julio zamora for no money (laughs) (laughs) can you can you answer this question so do i put down my pre-emergent crabgrass control just once in the spring no you're gonna do it twice amen brother and and that's the thing you have to have to so what happens is that, okay, you put down your crabgrass control and, you know, the one thing is like, oh, you put it down when the forsythias bloom. There's a lot of forsythias. There's not as many forsythias as there used to be. And so it's going to be March, April. And that's when you're going to prevent the broadest range of crabgrass. But what happens is, is that that stops working after a while. And there's still dormant crabgrass seeds that are maybe deeper in the soil or at a different spot that all of a sudden they start coming up. And this is in late May or even June. So you want to put a second shot after you go and you put down. So your first application is going to be March, April. Your next shot is going to be, you know, probably about six weeks after that. And that way you get the full season control and you get the first shot of crabgrass trying to germinate, and then you get those lingering seeds that are still in the soil, that they will come up. 
Um, and make sure you go to your local garden center and you take a look because you're going to be wanting to do a like step two um, what they see again scott's company uh, step yeah, two yeah, i mean yeah. step two um a, for longer than scott's was uh, in existence for their step program it was it was and it still is a weed and feed uh the basic active ingredients are all the same and that that's going to be your actually second or third step or you can always do it in conjunction because you can always do a liquid for your broadleaf weed control so again if liquids work better for killing existing living weeds crabgrass controls work better when it's a preventer and it creates a barrier in the soil to prevent that crabgrass from coming up so it, it makes sure that you're putting in two applications in the spring, uh, especially when you're seeing, you know, your lawn changing colors because there could be other weeds there, but uh, most likely it's crabgrass. So Julio's lawn is zoysia. You've never dealt with crabgrass. Never. You just have to deal with zoysia, which is <laughs> like a giant weed on your lawn. Yeah. yeah. But, but I understand. At least it stays the same color. Well, Next step. Yeah. <laughs> Beer brown. Yeah, I hope you're not. listening. Yeah. Shout out to Vera Brown. She is a, uh, I guess, a proponent of, of Zoysia. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's warm season grass. It's going to belong here. Anyway, uh, so back to crabgrass control. Uh, just make sure you're doing it twice in the spring. Uh, the great thing is, is that it's dying off on its own now. So you're only, what's happening is dropping seeds and, and other spots where you'll tell by almost the color. Like, oh, that's brown over there. So that m might be uh, a type of, um, say, Kalinga that might be dying off. Uh, and that might, which is great. I, I have a lot of Kalinga on my lawn. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where I need to control it by killing it but that means I have to replace my entire lawn. Yeah. And, um, oh, wow. you know, I, you got a big lawn. I do have a big lawn. Yeah. I have a big lawn and an aging back. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, but it's yeah. something that, that can be done. It's something that can be done. But make sure that you're getting your fertilizers down now in the fall because you're, you're really, you're, the, put, the effort you put in now uh, in the fall you'll reap the rewards in the spring. So I, you'll see it. You'll see it. Go outside today and, and look at your lawn and, and you'll find patches where all of a sudden it's yeah. like, wow, you know, that I thought that that, and that overseeding is, is a good idea. Liming this time of year is a good idea, but make sure you're putting down your fall fertilizer. You could do all of those things the same day. Anything to add, Julio? Yeah, I I, uh, I would say you know go to your local garden center and, and they're going to guide you as to what to do. Yeah, you know because you know, like you said, like you know, step one, that's all you do. Boom, and you're gonna you're gonna have uh, issues down the line. Yeah, yep. and, uh, and and garden centers they, they know that their advantage over whether it's a box store or whether it's the internet is that they have the regionalized information that you need to take care of your lawn your in your lawn. neighborhood. Yeah, your, your specific lawn, because they're all different. Right, and that, again, when you're looking on the web and you're reading for something for California, you don't realize it. Um, you know, I was looking at, I was reading an article and I was like, that doesn't sound right. And then I realized that it was written for Oregon. Oh. You know, you've, you've got to, you know, you've got to make sure you know where the sources are and your best source is your local garden center. And then you become, you know, somebody, you get adopted. You know, Julio, you have so <laughs> many people that come in and it's like, you know, look, I'm the owner of Bloomers. So like, I'm gonna, hey, can I help you? No, I want to see Julio. It's like, <laughs> I go in, I cry for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it's that, that the folks at the garden center want to teach you and train you and that they have the information that you need for your lawn.